Okay, so this may not be the most popular webtoon, but it is a popular webtoon. Here's the thing. Last year, in 2023, I was bombarded by a bunch of images of comics on TikTok, and these comics were all in the same art style, and I started to think, what is going on? What, like, what is this? And I learned that it was a webtoon called Operation True Love that has been pretty popular recently. This is the first time I'm ever reading a webtoon, and when I looked at the comments to sort of gather what the comic was about, I learned that it was about a love triangle. Triangle, and you know that I love love triangles. There may be a popular choice for who the main character should end up with in this love triangle, but I will be the judge of that, okay? And generally, my opinion is different from the popular opinion, and usually I can pretty much justify that because I love second choice, you know, love interests. I think most of the time they are the objectively better choice. There are exceptions to that rule, but uh, we will see who I end up falling for. Some of you might have a guess already. Okay, so let me start out by explaining explaining this webtoon to y'all so you can get a taste of the magic. Also, I believe this is a Korean comic, a South Korean comic, so the names are Korean. And even though I am half Korean, I cannot speak Korean for the life of me. I can't speak, read, write. I can't do shit. So like always, expect the pronunciation to be atrocious. So basically we've got the main character, my girl, Sue. And Sue is just kind of your average Joe type of character. She is depicted as very like plain, you know, not that smart, not that popular, just very run of the mill average gal. But you know what? I love her. She is currently dating this guy named Minu, not one of the potential men in the love triangle, I may add. Minu is an absolute ass. He really truly is. I can't find a single redeeming quality about this man. He flirts with other girls, doesn't give Sue his own girlfriend the time of day, and he is straight up so mean and nasty to her. For example, they're in the same class. They're in high school, I believe, and they were playing dodgeball. And Minu says, and I quote, kill her, hit her hard, aim for her legs. He wasn't saying that ironically in a joking, sarcastic banter way. No, he straight up meant it. He was paired up with another girl, flirting with said girl, and he was yelling these things to Sue in front of their whole class. And so you may ask Amanda, why doesn't Sue just break up with him on the spot at this point? You see, they have a complicated history, and when you've got history, that always makes things more complicated. On top of that, Minu does this thing where he gives Sue strawberry milk as an apology. He doesn't really verbalize his apology. He doesn't really ever recognize what he did wrong, changes his behavior. No, he just gives her strawberry milk and she takes that and thinks, oh wow, he is so cute. This is such a wonderful gesture. I'm going to forgive him. Sue, no, honey, no, don't, don't do that. So that's the current situation we've got there with Sue and Minu. I mean, at this point, whichever man comes into the mix, he will inevitably be better than what we've got already with Minu, so. But this isn't your average run-of-the-mill love triangle webtoon, I would imagine, considering this is the only one I've ever read. This webtoon has a little element of spice, in the sense that it has a little creepy mystery sci-fi element. Sue ends up finding this jelly pop phone in her locker with a bunch of creepy stalker messages, images. What is a jelly pop phone, you may ask? It is kind of, I wanna say it's like a flip phone type deal, old fashioned phone. When Sue finds this phone in her locker, she's like, wow, that is odd, creepy. But here's the thing, the only other person with this type of phone in our class is Yunyuk. So given that logic, she was thinking, oh, this is probably Yunyuk's phone but it ends up not being his phone, and that's more of the mystery element that we'll get into later. But you may be asking who his Yunyuk. Well, he is one of the potential love interests in the triangle, and to make it even spicier, he's Minu's best friend. I don't know if best friend, but like they're good friends. Yunyuk and Sue don't really know each other that well at this point, but from the interactions they have had, he seems a bit rude. He low-key ignores her. We later find out this is due to um, a hearing deficit in one of his ears, but you know, we don't know that at this point. He is the type of guy apparently to remind the teacher to check everyone's homework. He gets good grades, he's tall, athletic, a bunch of the girls in the school have a crush on him. He kind of has it all going for him. So Yunyuk and Sue end up finding each other paired up recently for a lot of things. They were paired up during the dodgeball incident I mentioned earlier, and then they're paired up for chore duty. So on this fateful day of chore duty, Sue is kind of rushing through her chores because Minu invited her to the movies with Raim. Raim 
is Sue's sister, not blood related, but Sue's family took Raim in when Raim's dad left and her mom died. So she's like basically Loki an orphan. And Raim lost her parents at a young age. So her and Sue essentially have been sisters for a long time. They love each other, presumably. They've been growing up together. They trust each other. They share everything. You know, they're, they're really, they have a really strong bond is what I'm getting at. So in classic Minu fashion, he does, doesn't does really ask Sue out on dates anymore. So Sue is really excited naturally to go to the movies. It's slightly unfortunate that Raim will also be there. So it's not like a full fledged date, but you know what? Sue is gonna take what she can get at this point. She's rushing through the chores. She's running back to the classroom. Yunyuk is a little bit in front of her. He looks into the classroom, sees something, tries to cover Sue's eyes, but she catches a glimpse. And what does she catch a glimpse of? Raim and Minu kissing. That is right, betrayal, double homicide, people. Sue is stunned, she cannot speak. And when Raim and Minu start walking out of the classroom, Sue grabs Yunyuk, shoves him into a corner. So, you know, they're in that classic little in a corner, hiding in a corner situation in close quarters, if you know what I mean. Things are getting spicy up in here. This webtoon is all about drama, people pairing up, trying to find their perfect matches. If you're into making matches as well, then let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Matchmasters. In Matchmasters, two players compete head to head to match pieces on a board and get the highest score. There are lots of powerful boosters, exciting game modes, and different ways to strategize and win. The game modes change on a daily basis, but the ones I really love are the special themed solo game modes. In these games, you're challenged to reach various checkpoints within a set number of moves in a set amount of time. Each checkpoint reached gets you an epic prize and refreshes your move counter. My first time playing, I got absolutely wrecked, as you can see. I only managed to reach one of the checkpoints before I ran out of moves. Let's see if I got any better. Okay, 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 things are looking good. Things are looking good. Things are looking really good. Things are looking not so good. Not so good. Oh no. It takes some practice. They're definitely a challenge. You can also play against someone you know, and if they're a noob, then that might be an easier task. Here's a clip of me absolutely annihilating my sister when we went head to head. Oh my god. Yes! Oh, I don't know oh, what to do. Oh, I don't know oh, what to yes, do. Yes! Yes! Matchmasters is free to install, free to play, and is ad-free. Click on the link in the description below or in the pinned comment to download Matchmasters and complete the in-game rewards calendar to win daily free gifts and the chance to win a 500 US dollar Amazon gift card. Matchmasters will be notifying winners in-game on January 28th. Thank you so much again to Matchmasters for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the story. And at this point, Yunyuk was like low-key, high-key judging Sue for not confronting them at that moment. And then Sue saw this and clapped back at him and was like, stop looking at me like I'm pathetic. And if you don't really know the story yet, you may be thinking the same thing as Yunyuk. Like, Sue does seem a little bit pathetic. She's putting up with a boyfriend who treats her like shit, and then she's not confronting her shitty boyfriend and her best friend slash sister for cheating, you know? This whole thing is really, really messed up. But here's what my girl Sue was thinking. Sue was thinking that if her parents found out that Raim is, you know, backstabbing her, then they would kick Raim out and Raim would have nowhere to go. So she's, you know, giving Raim a little bit of mercy. And now you may be asking yourselves, why would Raim do such a thing? Like Minu, he is, he seems like a bad dude, but Raim, she has a good relationship with Sue, why would she mess that up? Well, Raim is kind of the antithesis, I don't know if I'm using that word correctly, of Sue. She's smart, pretty, popular. She's got it all going for her. She's kind of like the girl version of Yunyuk at face level, not on like a personal level. It's kind of a complex situation, but we learned that Raim wants to take something of Sue's. You know, Sue's parents are always going to put Sue first. Raim doesn't feel like she has anything of her own necessarily. It's kind of a territorial situation. So she doesn't actually like Minu for <laughs> his personality. She just likes the fact that he is with Sue, which makes it even more messed up. So then the next day, Sue and Yunyuk both happen to be late to school and so they have to like climb the fence, sneak over to get into school. And during this whole interaction where they're helping each other sneak in, Yunyuk apologizes to Sue for kind of judging her like he did. And he apologizes for being a little bit cold to her, says that he didn't really understand her, but he thinks he's starting to. And he's really glad that she decided to break up with Minu. And Sue was like, ah, yep, so glad, so glad. 
but the thing is is that she didn't break up with Minu and Yunyuk ends up finding that out very soon after that interaction and then he starts Haiki judging her once more. But later upon some further reflection, Sue decides to break up with Minu. She brought a sandwich to the breakup because it was lunchtime and Minu, without even a second thought, started eating her sandwich and that apparently was the last straw for Sue because she said to him, wipe your mouth when you eat, it's disgusting, before walking away from him and leaving him in the dust, as she should have done quite some time ago. But you know what? A win is a win. At this point, Sue is sort of icing out Raim. She's not speaking to Raim. Raim knows that Sue is mad at her for some reason, doesn't really pry into why, but they're just not on speaking terms right now. Raim isn't being actively mean to Sue, but Sue sometimes is a little bit mean to Raim, which is fair, you know, to, in my personal opinion. And then Yunyuk and Sue start hanging out a bunch. They have a bunch of cute moments. There's this one point where Sue has a popsicle and then she needs to tie her shoe, but she's got double popsicleage in both hands. And so Yunyuk ties her shoe for her. And then he also holds her popsicles for her, even though he hates the sticky feeling of popsicles dripping on him, but he endures it for Sue. <laughs> he saves her from a group of mean girls that were, you know, probably about to beat her up. He also saves her from getting hit by a car in the rain. You know, we have to have a scene in the rain. He learned more about Sue's life, learned that Sue's parents have a really healthy, nice relationship, and Sue was trying to kind of mimic that in her own relationship. She didn't want to give up on her and Minu, and that's why she was kind of putting up with all of this bullshit. On top of that, Yunyuk and Sue end up sitting next to each other in class. She's kind of a small girl. Yunyuk is a bigger, taller guy, and she was kind of like craning her neck, and he saw that she couldn't see the board, and so he grabbed her seat and pulled her closer, Nick Jonas Priyanka style, yes indeed. And then naturally, because Yunyuk, like I said before, is one of Minu's best friends, Friends, rumor starts circulating that Sue left Minu for Yunyuk at lunchtime. He sits with Sue, gives her his milk, which has some emotional weight to it because Minu used to do the same very thing. And then he invites her to a movie for all to hear. And then she's like, oh, you mean for the class assignment? You know, trying to keep the rumors at bay. And then she drags him to a private area and he asks her to the movies once more, which shows that he's doing it for her and not for the rumors because he's doing it in private. So the day comes where Sue and Yunyuk were supposed to go to the movies. They were going to meet at the movie theater. So Sue was walking there by herself. She ends up running into this really obnoxious guy and Raim, who also happens to coincidentally be there, starts defending her from this obnoxious guy. But while this was also happening, a group of kids from their school in another area saw this interaction happening. One of them snapped a picture of Sue getting absolutely wrecked by the obnoxious guy, and that person sent that picture to Minu. At this very same time, meanwhile, Minu and Yunyuk's mutual friends were trying to get them to reconcile, so they invited Minu and Yunyuk to this like gaming area, but it did not work. When Yunyuk got there and saw Minu, he was like, I hate your fucking guts. Think what you want about me and Sue, because Yunyuk obviously knows that Minu cheated on Sue with Raim, so he does not like Minu anymore. They are on very bad terms. But then Minu gets the notification that someone sent him the picture. He pulls it up on his screen. Yunyuk, Minu both see the picture, and then they both run to the location where Sue is at. Minu gets there first. He runs to Sue. He goes up to her, asks her if she's okay, and at first she pushes him away, but then she brings him in and kisses him on the cheek, and guess what? Yunyuk saw, he was there. And on top of that, Minu asks Sue for another chance and she says yes. Now, I feel like a lot of you may be thinking, what is with this girl Sue? She is making all of the wrong decisions. Well, let's go back to the jelly pop from earlier, the sneaky jelly pop phone with the stalker messages and images. Sue ends up analyzing the chip inside of the jelly pop phone and she learns that this phone is connected to the Meringue Entertainment Company. And this is a really famous top tier entertainment company that ends up representing the hottest up and coming talent. They seem to have foresight into who will be popular. The CEO of Meringue is a god a literal god, and he discovered the love point system. What is the love point system, you may ask? Basically, the idea of the love point system is that your popularity is predetermined from birth. 
everybody has a set amount of love points from the day you are born and then over the course of your life your love points will increase and increase and, and increase until it gets to that maximum point that's predetermined from birth the lowest love point score on record was back in 1919 this random guy had a score of 101 love points sue has a score of zero she is a glitch in the system and once the god CEO figured this out, you know, he's kind of like, he's using the jelly pop to stalk her because she is the glitch in the system. And either he wants her to increase her love points so that she's no longer a glitch in the system or die. The jelly pop phone that she was given by the CEO, and she doesn't know for sure that this is like the CEO on the other end, but um, spoiler alert, it is. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that from the beginning. This jelly pop phone, when you use the camera function and point it at a person, it will show you their love point score. So, here's the thing. When Sue was interacting with Minu, when he was asking her for another chance, she had the jelly pop open, pointing it at herself. And guess what? Her love point score went up to one. And Sue was thinking, OMG, uh, Minu is making my love points go up. So I have to milk this for everything it's worth. That's why she decided to take Minu back. But here's the thing, once your love score goes up, apparently it can go back down in Sue's case. So when she rechecked her score later again that day, she realized um, it had gone back down to zero. So she needs to create a plan and she creates this plan. Operation Cheat with Yunyuk. <laughs> Basically, the idea is that whatever emotion you feel, it could be love, jealousy, and Minu is very much inclined to feel jealous because he's a prideful boy. Sue is gonna bank on that jealousy by cheating with Yunyuk because, you know, he and Min Minu are friends, but she also thinks that Yunyuk has a crush on Raim, and she thinks that by doing so, once her and Minu are like fully solidified together, then Yunyuk can go for Raim. So Sue has this whole big plan, use Yunyuk to make Minu jealous, and she proposes this plan to Yunyuk and he says, no, that is ridiculous, I hate cheaters, and I'm not going to help you cheat on Minu, even though he cheated first, but you know what? I just cannot support this. And you know what? Fair enough. We love a king who hates cheaters. So Sue's all frustrated, and to blow off some steam, she goes to the arcade. My girl is a gamer, she's really good at games. She goes to this game where you could like shoot a bunch of stuff on the screen, and she's playing a multiplayer game. She just hops in on <laughs> a game that someone else already started and she's playing, she absolutely demolishes this other person that's next to her. And then she leaves without a second thought. But do you wanna know who this person is? Doa! Doa is the other really, really good looking guy in their school, a bunch of girls like him. There are rumors that he is an idol trainee for Meringue Entertainment because his looks are just so, ethereal and godlike. He never comes to school. He's always like looking tired. But anyway, that's who Sue was playing with in the arcade, Doa in disguise, because you know, his 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 good looks are just so magnetic that he has to shield his face to prevent few people from going up to him. But anyway, because Sue left the arcade in such a hurry, she left a bunch of books like on the arcade desk next to Doa. So the next day, Doa barges into their class. He's not in the same class as Sue and Yun and Minu. But anyway, Doa barges into Sue's class, sits right in front of her, and he was all like, if you want the rest of these books back, you're gonna have to teach me to be better at video games. And then one day we learn why Yunyuk hates cheaters so much. It's because his dad is cheating on his mom with the school's music teacher. Sue tries to prevent Yunyuk from seeing his dad and the music teacher out in public by shoving him into a photo booth. And so they take a bunch of cutesy photo booth pictures together and they each have a copy and they each display it in their rooms. <laughs> It's time for the amusement park trip. So basically the god CEO of Meringue Entertainment, sometimes he intervenes with the jelly pop phone, but sometimes he directly intervenes in person. So he ends up intervening by giving Sue this scarf randomly when they were on a roller coaster ride together. Sue doesn't know that this is the god, by the way. She's just like, oh, this random person left their scarf. Sue and her two friends end up joining Yunyuk and his two friends. And then the CEO intervenes again. He spills something discreetly on Sue's hoodie so that Yunyuk has to give her his jacket. So Minu and Sue end up getting into a fight and then Yunyuk goes to console Sue and he's like, 
like, come on, Sue, let's go on the Ferris wheel together. They get onto the Ferris wheel. They get stuck at the highest point thanks to the CEO. And it's a bit cold up there, but thankfully Sue has her scarf. She wraps her scarf around Yunyuk. And he's all like, if I say no to the cheating plan, will you ask someone else? And she's like, uh, yeah. And he was like, fine, let's cheat. Fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. Literally, fireworks went off. So, Sue and Yinyuk are officially enacting the cheating plan. Sue lays out all of the rules and she says, hey, like, this is all fake, so don't get nervous for real. And he immediately starts trying to make her nervous for real. And then Sue and Doa have a, a little training session at the arcade. They end up hiding from this mystery man by uh, going into a karaoke room and then they have a little karaoke session. And then Sue called Yunyuk for like a fake date because she was in front of Raim, but Yunyuk didn't know it was fake. So he ended up actually coming over to Sue's house. And so while Yunyuk and Sue were in her room, Raim ended up bringing a bunch of friends over and then Yunya couldn't come back outside. So they were holed up in Sue's room for like the entirety of the night. They were listening to music together in the dark. Each of them had one earbud. They were looking into each other's eyes on the bed. They had a moment staring into each other's eyes. At midnight, it actually ended up being Yunya's birthday. And so she wished him happy birthday. And she was like, sorry, it's not from someone, you know, super close to you. And he was like, oh, I thought we were close. <laughs> I thought we were close. And then on a different day, Sue ends up running into Doa and he asks for her number and she's like, sure. And then he leaves and then Sue thinks she sees the CEO and starts running after him. But guess what? She gets run over by a bike. And guess who was riding the bike? Mr. Doa. <laughs> he ends up patching her up. It was a super cute moment. So the operation, the cheating operation, isn't really going anywhere. So the god decides to give Sue a deadline. He gives her like this hourglass thingy and he's like, you better fix things before the sand runs out. So Sue is feeling all this pressure. And so she proposes that she and Yunyuk do a fake kiss. She thinks he will say no right off the bat, but instead he's like, how should we go about it? <laughs> How should we go about it? And then in music class, the music teacher who is cheating with Yunyuk's dad needed someone to accompany the singing tests on the piano. And Yunyuk apparently was the only one in the class that knew how to play the piano and the teacher know knew that and she was like egging him on. But Sue could see that Yunyuk looked uncomfortable. So Sue was like, I'll volunteer even though she has no idea how to play the piano. So now Yunyuk has to teach Sue how to play the piano. And so they decide to go to this abandoned music room, start to learn and they were in the process of learning when it turns out Doa was there the whole time taking a nap and he decides to squeeze between Yunyuk and Sue on the bench pushes Yunyuk out of the way and he's like <laughs> I think this bench is only big enough for two <laughs> he's so silly so then later Sue was like okay I think it's time to do the kissing plan so she goes to the park um at this playground and she decides to like hide in one of the tunnels just to like prepare for the inevitable kissing plan, but Minu and Raim end up showing up to the park way earlier than expected, and she overhears Minu tell Raim that he likes her and that he only ever liked Sue as a friend the entire time they were dating. Like he was never romantically attracted to her. And so Sue starts crying. She lets Minu and Raim leave, and when Yunyuk shows up, he finds her crying and she tells him what happened. She was all like, Minu's right though, who would want to kiss me? And so she leans forward and Yunyuk flinches and and she's like, see, you don't even want to kiss me. And then he says, what makes you think I wouldn't be able to? And then kisses her. And then later, Sue ends up breaking up with Minu. All of like the romanticizing of Minu in her head has all come crashing down after that confession. She could see him for who he really is. Then Sue and Doa end up hanging out at the mall. They take their own set of cutesy photo booth pictures together. And then Doa and Sue and a bunch of other students who are at the bottom of the class have to take supplemental class is because they're performing poorly. So Sue and Doa are staying late after school doing their supplemental lesson and then the last two to finish and they end up getting locked at the school. They end up getting really close during this lockdown session. Doa tells her that he has three part-time jobs. His dad was actually the one they were running away from at the arcade way back when. And then Sue tells him about all the drama that's been going on with her and Minu. Doa ends up jumping down from the window of the second story to get them out of the building. And then he fakes being 
being injured in order for Sue to carry him. So then there was this little mini episode where Sue got insecure because she likes Yunyuk, but she doesn't think Yunyuk could like her because she thinks that he used to like Raim. So then she starts looking and dressing and acting like Raim and like getting hair extensions. And then Yunyuk ends up like confronting her about this and he was like girl you don't need to be doing all that whatever preconceived notions you have about what my preferences are like that's all nonsense but if you were to ask me right now i think i might like short hair and guess what sue has short hair <laughs> But then, you know, after he said that, she checked to see if her love points went up and it didn't. And so she got all hurt because this means that Yunyuk doesn't like her. So she starts avoiding him. They end up switching seats in class. And so now her and Yunyuk barely talk. But then one day she decides to confront him about this and she's like, why are we like acting so distant and weird? Um, aren't you going to ask me what the status of the operation is because I broke up with Minu, so like now what? And then they have to like hide in a crevice of the locker room for some reason and they're in close quarters, it's really tense and then Sue is like, let me just try something and she hugs him to see if she can gather if she has feelings for him, if he has feelings for her and you know what it seems very likely both ways and then she starts feeling skeptical about the whole love point system because she's like i think we have a thing there i think there's a spark so why do i have zero love points so then doa has been missing school has been missing his supplemental lessons and so sue is like oh i'll bring the work to his house so she goes to his house um on the way there she bumps into a man and when she turns around, she realizes that man is in fact Doa, battered and bruised. This man was barely conscious. He ends up slumping into her arms. She drags him back to his bed. And then she goes out, buys medicine, takes care of him. And then when he gains consciousness, wakes back up, they share a meal together. He has to stand because he only has one chair and he gave it to Sue to sit in. It turns out I'm pretty sure his dad was the one to beat him up, so daddy issues. So anyway, Sue starts getting suspicious of Meringue and starts to do some investigating on meringue so she's like i think that i need a meringue business card to get into the building so i could try to find out like where the ceo's office is so doa decides to go with her because he's the one with all the meringue business cards because he's trying to get recruited by meringue entertainment all the time and so he goes with her on this operation so the two of them those sneaky snakes they get into the building but they don't end up finding the president um because like they get caught and kicked out before that could happen so then sue and yunya finally have their movie date they go to the movies it's a fun time and then they get trapped in an elevator and Sue is afraid of falling from heights because the CEO he like traumatized her by giving her this vision of her dying by falling from a building if she doesn't like increase her love points anyways Yunyuk's like it's okay girl you can use me as your shield so she climbs on top of him they're about to kiss but then like the people come they're there to save them from like being trapped in the elevator so they don't end up kissing but it was a pretty nice moment so then later during school Minu's convo with his friends gets blasted over the loudspeakers and during this conversation he's shitting all over Sue and so Doa goes and beats up <laughs> Minu, my king. Raim also slaps Minu, so that was a mini slay, I will have to say. Meanwhile, Yunyuk goes to Sue to like comfort her. He puts on, he gives her headphones and then connects those headphones to the piano and starts playing the piano for her. And he plays even though he has trauma. We will get into this later, but he does not play the piano anymore because it is just too painful for him. So because of the whole loudspeaker incident, Sue ended up going home early and Yunyuk dished school with her and they both ended up on this bus and Sue was right about to confess to Yunyuk when the bus exploded with them in it. They ended up being fine, but that incident was because Sue and Doa went to Meringue headquarters to look for the CEO. So that was his message of being like, don't look for me. Sue ended up going over to Doa's place again and he got another chair specifically for her. It was pink. During their meal together, she ended up spilling ramen on her shirt and she had to change into one of his. And because like the way that she spilled the thing, like it, it spilled onto her back and it was boiling, it was hot. So she needed ointment so that it doesn't scar. And she was like, Doa, you're gonna have to put the 
the ointment on my back and he was getting all flustered. Yunyuk and Doa start fully beefing. They both like Sue and they both know it. Minu ended up apologizing to Sue publicly for cheating. Like he admitted that he was the one to cheat, not Sue. He didn't really sound sincere when he was doing it. So Sue was like, get down on your knees and beg for my forgiveness, bitch. She didn't really say that, but like it was close, you know? And so the reason that Minu decided to apologize was because Yunyuk went to him previously to get a confession out of him and then punched him in the face. And when Yunyuk told Sue what happened, she was like, he didn't punch you though, right? <laughs> so then one day Sue ends up running into Doa while he's working one of his many part-time jobs. At this job, he is working as like a pig mascot. And so she decides to help him out. They're both wearing the pig mascots. And then when she gets back before Doa, she sees that the clothes that she, you know, changed out of to get into this pig costume are locked away in this room and she won't be able to access them. And then she ends up hurting her ankle somehow and then Yunyuk has to carry Suwei home. And then he's like, girl, I need to lecture you. You need to put yourself first more. And then Suwei's all like, I'm actually pretty selfish. And he's like, okay, then do something selfish. And she's like, no, if I do, then you'll stop liking me. And then he's like, no, I actually really like you. So that's kind of a hard thing to imagine. And so that was his confession. And then Suwei is like, okay, can you just like wait for me though? And he's like, give me a reason to wait. And then she kisses him on the cheek and is like, I really like you, is that a good enough reason? <laughs> But here's the thing, the reason why she's making him wait is because she is really scared of something bad happening to him because the CEO is out to get Sue, and so she doesn't want any negative effects to like affect Yunyuk as well. In her head, she's thinking, let me get this whole situation with the CEO resolved and then we can be together. Meanwhile, Doa broke into the locked room to get Sue's clothes, was looking for her, saw her and Yunyuk together. <laughs> I feel so bad. Uh, so Yunyuk and Sue are officially keeping their distance. Sue ends up running into Doa and he is a little bit mad at her. He's pouting because he saw the whole thing with her and Yunyuk. But nevertheless, he asks her if she got home all right and then gave her back her clothes and then whips out Cindy, the black rose of Versailles. I never even mentioned this until now, but here's the thing. Sue is a author. She writes fan fiction for this very niche uh, manga, I guess. But anyway, Doa's like, yeah, well, they both like know what the president looks like sort of by this point. And, he, and he's like, yeah, I saw the president reading this. And through this interaction, Sue ends up realizing, oh my God, the president is a diehard fan of my fan fiction. My fan fiction only gets like four views and the president of Meringue Entertainment is one of them. And the reason that he's harassing me is because he wants me to finish writing my fan fiction. <laughs> so to piss him off, she ends up writing the worst ending possible to her fan fiction, publishes it. Basically, it was like one of the characters dies of brain cancer or something. Then Yunyuk and Sue end up going to Raim's piano concert, but he has to leave midway through the performance because he has trauma. And so Sue goes after him and he ends up outside. He's crying under this tree and he's all like, I stopped playing the piano because I didn't want to be like my father because his father is like a really good piano guy. <laughs> and so he pulls her in for a kiss they kiss, she's like on top of him and then he flips her over and then he's on top and then he gives her a charm. A charm? A lucky charm? Oh my God. So then Sue and the CEO end up meeting in person. They have this big old meeting where a contract is signed stating that the CEO will not harm Sue or anybody that she knows in exchange for a good proper ending to her fan fiction. So now she and Yunyuk can be together. Um, Minu straight up left the school. <laughs> he, he fucking moved. Doa is now like an official part of her and Yunyuk and like all of their friend group. And they all decide to go to the beach. This webtoon is still ongoing. If you want to know my reactions to like the rest of this webtoon, the series, I'll keep on reading it on my Patreon probably. I'll let you know my thoughts there, but oh my God, here's the thing. I like Yunyuk and I love Doa. I love both of them. I love Yunyuk and Sue together. I honestly think, okay, I'm a little bit in love with Doa. So I think that if he ends up with Sue, I might get jealous. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
sort of. Thank y'all so much for coming on this journey with me. It was such a fun time. Remember to click the link in the description below to download Match Masters and complete the in-game rewards calendar to win daily free gifts and the chance to win a 500 US dollar Amazon gift card. Match Masters will be notifying winners in-game on January 28th. Be sure not to miss that. Thanks so much for being here, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!